Hello everyone and welcome back to Revit Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. It's another short and sweet lesson today. Let's see how to create a clean corner glass joint for your curtain walls or curtain system. Essentially, we want to turn something like this, which is quite messy as a corner there, where you have two curtain walls coming together. We want to turn this into a clean joint condition, such as this one over here. It's super easy once you know how to. And there's no need to use any Revit plugins for this exercise. Let's see how it's done. By the way, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe now because we do tutorials like this every single week. Okay, let's begin. Our objective is simple. We want to have this curtain wall here and this one coming together at this corner where we want to have mullions automatically joined together in a nice, seamless way like this. And also we want to have glass panels at this corner to touch one another nicely. So you can see here, this one goes all the way to the corner and this one steps back just a little bit. So there's no overlapping geometry. Everything is nice and clean, just like we would build it in real life. So let's get back to the beginning. This is the two curtain walls as I started with. This one here and this one there. Usually when you have Revit walls or more precisely curtain walls coming together like this, the corner will look something like this plan view here. So that's wall number one and that's wall number two. Of course, this is really messy. It would be impossible to build this in real life. So the key thing is to start joining these two walls in a correct way and then we can clean up the joint using a few simple tips and tricks. At the end, we should have something like this one here which is the plan view of the final curtain system that we want to end up with. So I can say that's the one mullion, the one at the bottom, that's another one there on the other side, and of course our glass panels are there as well. If I now turn this to hidden lines mode, you can see what I was talking about earlier. So there's one panel there, going all the way to the corner, and this one step back to join nicely with the other one. All right, to make sure we're on the same page, let's delete these two here so we can start fresh together. Back to the plan view, I can see now that these two walls, they seem to be joining, but actually they don't. If you are wondering why, here's why. This wall, when I have it selected, I can see the end point of the wall is right there where this little circular dot is. In this case, this one is correct because the end point of it is on or along the center line of this other wall we are trying to join to. If I instead select this wall, however, you can see clearly this end point is having a problem. It's not where it's supposed to be. To fix this, we need to actually make sure these two walls are nicely trimmed. In Revit, that's very easy to do. Just go to Modify, choose Trim, Click on one wall now, and then click on the second one. When I do this, if I now select the second wall just like before, I can see its endpoint, the circular blue dot, is now along the center line of this other wall. So that's step number one done. The takeaway here is, before you do anything else to clean up this joint, you need to make sure that your walls are actually joined at one single point. In this case, the one simple point right there. Okay, let's move on now to step two. For this second step, we need to make sure that the mullions we want to join are actually on the same levels. Let me show you what that means. I'm now back to 3D. We can go to this corner view there, between front and right. I can see now that these two mullions, let me try to select it, this one, and this other one there, they are on the same level or height or elevation, whatever way you want to call it. So that's good to go. These two mullions in the middle of the two walls that are also at the right place because now I can see this one and this other one here, they are now at the same height. The top ones, however, of this wall here is now higher than the mullion we want to join it to on this other side. This will become a problem if we don't resolve it now. Because for mullions to join to one another automatically, 
they need to be at the same height so before you do anything else let's now select this grid line on this second curtain wall just press tab until you see this dotted line highlighted click to select it now and now we want to move it up so that this mullion is aligned to this one I can go to this other corner view here where I can clearly see the two mullion lines not at the same height we can now go to move pick this point and then move it up just like that in this case it's quite easy because I have only two walls and I can change this view here to where I'm best placed to move this curtain grid if you are working instead on a very big model or your views are not this optimal there could be a problem selecting and moving the grid line in that case don't try to do it in 3d that's more tricky let's return to one of the elevations I can now go to level 1 and just very quickly create a section like this because I want to see this grid line and this other wall at the same time we can now open the section here if I now press tab I can select this grid line much easier than I did in 3d so if you tried before and you couldn't get a grid line change to an elevation view where it's easier to select it and before it was a bit lower maybe uh, somewhere over there in this elevation I can simply use the move tool again move this grid line from this point to this point okay so that's step number two done always try to make sure the mullions are at the same height across the entire extent of your curtain walls now we are ready to begin step number three which is to delete our corner mullions so let's say I want to delete this one here and all those below it all three mullions I can of course select them one by one like this but imagine if you had not three but 10 20 mullions doing this manually may take a bit of time there's an easier way though if I now click on one of them and then right click on this one when it's still selected I can say select mullions on the grid line and now all those other mullions on the same grid line will be also selected along with the first one that I picked so if you have 50 20 100 mullions on this grid line all of them will be selected at once with that's done I can now unpin them if they are pinned I can tell they are pinned because this button here with the little pin icon is there so firstly let's try to unpin them like this and now they are unpinned and free to go I can just delete them we can now repeat the same thing for this other walls corner mullion so get this one there right click select mullions on this grid line unpin and one more time delete so when I finish doing that you can already see it's starting to clean up nicely for the two bottom mullions there and these two middle ones however with this one here it's a bit hard to do this the way we try to because they haven't cleaned up themselves and the reason is this this mullion and this one even though they seem to be of the same type they are actually different this left one is a border mullion because it runs along the top border of this curtain wall on the left this one however is an interior mullion of this curtain wall on the right and that's why they cannot clean up nicely by themselves there are several ways to solve this problem you can try to edit these mullions manually but the easier way in my opinion is this make sure they are both either interior mullions or they should be both border mullions in our case here I'll try to make this one a border mullion to do so we of course need to reduce the height of this wall here by how much you would ask well to match the height of this curtain wall here on the left let's do that I can try firstly with the align tool and then click on this top face of this wall as a target and then simply select this other face here as the thing to move and there you have them at the same height of course even though those mullions have started joining up we still see a bit of an artifact here and there's nothing here to worry about let me show you why when I click on this mullion there I can simply just unpin it 
and delete it. That reveals for me a border mullion just behind that other one that I just selected and deleted. So this one has already joined up with this other one here pretty nicely for us. Over here we have the same problem, even though not so visible. We have one mullion overlapping another one. So with this one, simple process as well, unpin and delete. Of course, if you initially created these two walls with the same height, you wouldn't have this problem. I'm just showing this in case your model started the same way mine did. Okay, so with step 3, we are halfway there. Because the mullions are now nicely joined. The last thing for step 4 is this. We want to join these two curtain panels in a more realistic way. At the moment, even though they look fine from a distance, like that, when I zoom in, I can see that this one here is actually clashing with this other panel on the other side. That's even more evident in plan view. When I look at this, that's clear to see there. So, how can we do this then? Super easy as well. Simply select one panel on one side. In our case, let's go for this one here on the right. With that selected, I can go up here and click on Edit in Place. It will turn solid, but don't worry, we will fix this in a moment. For now, the important thing is to resolve this corner here. So let's try to select this object. We can now clearly see this is simply an extrusion because I can just edit it using this button here, Edit Extrusion. If I now turn on the Properties window, it's still a curtain panel. So what we're doing here is this, we are modifying the geometry of the curtain panel, which happens to be an extrusion. So just like with any other extrusions, we can simply use the Align tool pick this face as the target, press tab until you get this vertical face on this other side highlighted. So click once to set this target. I can now click one more time on this vertical edge of this panel to align this edge with that bigger face. Of course, we'll get this warning because the constraints of this panel were there before and now because we are editing this panel manually, we are breaking one of those existing constraints. That's fine for now, we know what we're doing, so let's go ahead and remove any breaking constraints. That is now done for this panel, I can now go up here again and do Finish Model. Of course, the material didn't change back to be glass, so that's something we have to fix now. Let's firstly work out which material to use here. Easy to do, I can now just select this panel here on the left and go to Edit Type. It's now clearly showing me that the material I should use is called Glass. So let's now copy this text there and close this window. Next step, select the panel which is modified and edit it in place again. Now with the extrusion selected again, I can now go to Material. Click on this button here, search for the same material by name and just select it from there. It has turned back to be transparent, so we are good to do finish model. So, this one is now fixed. I can now repeat the same step for this other panel on the left there. So, select it now, edit in place, use the align command. In this case, I can maybe do this alignment easier in plan view. So, switch to level one now, set the target face for the alignment and then click on the face that should move. Again, the constraints will be upset and saying there's a warning there, but we know what we're doing. So again, let's remove the constraints. With this done, I can now, of course, select the panel again now. And before we forget, set the material back to be the original one. We can now do finish and look at that. That's a very clean, beautiful glass joint right at the corner. We can now simply repeat the process for these two panels on top. First one done, finish and do the second one as well. Here you can also try the alignment in plan view. 
but because I haven't made a plan view with the correct view range to see those two panels, I can also do it a hard way and set the alignment in 3D. In our case, I can try to do wireframe, select this face here, which belongs to the panel on the right, and then click on the face that should move to match that location. With that done, I can switch back to shaded to simply and finally correct the material. Finish again, and that is now done. A very nicely built and joined glass corner of two cutter walls. And because this is Revit, we did the right thing in 3D that will give us this nice little plan view ready for the next step of your project. There we go. If you enjoyed this lesson and want more like this coming every single week, make sure to subscribe to this channel now. For now, practice what you've learned and I'll see you in the next lesson.